Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. I'm your host, Ashley, and I'm here with another advanced statistic primer lesson. As I've mentioned in previous episodes like this, this is by no means an in-depth or expert level overview of what these statistics mean. I just wanna give you guys the most basic one-on-one primer on what some of these advanced stats mean. And as with previous episodes, I'm gonna leave links down below to places where you can get really expert on this. And for Sierra, which we're gonna discuss today, there's incredible guides on how it's calculated. This one is so advanced that they won't even let you see a basic formula when you read the glossary description. It's just there's so much that goes into it. So I'll leave some links down below for fan graphs, for beyond the box score, and a couple other places where you can get some more information on Sierra if you're interested. But this is a basic 101 primer on what Sierra is. And Sierra means skill interactive ERA. So you know by now what ERA is. It's earned run average. Average. We did an episode on it a couple weeks back and I'm going to link that down below as well. So if you want a refresher on what ERA means, earned run average, you can kind of go back and see how that's broken down. It is one of the most basic pitching statistics and simply looks at how many earned runs a pitcher gives up over innings pitched. Very basic. What Sierra does, kind of like FIP or XFIP, which we've also talked about in a previous episode, it seeks to find a pitcher's true value by removing all defensive metrics around them or any kind of additional fielding that may have looked like it impacted that player's performance, but may not actually be indicative of their true skill. Should their ERA have been higher? Should it have been lower? But Sierra tries to determine if a pitcher's ERA is actually indicative of their true value. And it also aims to look at what their ERA will be going forward. It tries to look at why some pitchers are better at limiting balls in play than others. And it does look at all balls in play, including ground outs, fly outs, and all of that, things that do look at defense, unlike something like a FIP or an XFIP. And it tries to take take all the evidence of a pitcher's work and use it to determine what their true ERA should have been. The main beats of Sierra kind of look like this and they may sound really obvious, but like I said, the actual formula that goes into factoring these into a number is just mind-bogglingly bonkers. But at its core level, Sierra says, strikeouts are good. We kind of know that. Strikeouts mean there are no balls in play. So a high strikeout pitcher is likely generating a lot of weaker contact and as a result they're going to give up fewer hits and fewer home runs. Walks are bad. Also obvious because we know that as base runners are created, scoring opportunities go higher. So if a pitcher walks a lot of batters, that means that they're more likely to give up a lot of runs. Basically, the fewer walks a pitcher gives up, the better their numbers are gonna be. Then it looks kind of at the different types of hits that can be achieved. So ground balls, ground balls go for hits more often than fly balls, but ground balls can also be turned into double plays, which can impact a player's babbit, which we discussed in a previous episode. Fly balls go for hits less often, but if they fall, they have more of an opportunity to go for an extra base hit. So these are some of the factors that are looked at when we look at something like Sierra. Now the way Sierra is formatted is meant to be very easy to read for anybody looking at pitching statistics in that it looks exactly like ERA, FIP, or XFIP, the number dot number number scheme. And just like those other ones, the lower that number is, the better the pitcher's overall quality. Now an interesting thing about Sierra is that relief pitchers actually tend to have better Sierra numbers than a starting pitcher. And this may be due to the fact that they're used in specialized situations. And even though all pitchers main jobs is to get an out, the goal of a relief pitcher is to get outs in a very abbreviated span of time, meaning they have to be better at it basically. So it's interesting in that their numbers are always lower. And even for a standard starting pitcher who has moved to the relief position, their Sierra numbers tend to drop by about 037 when they make that move. And if a reliever moves to a starting position, their numbers tend to go up by that same value. So that's an interesting thing, I think. Kind of shows you what the value of a relief pitcher is in that sense. Now, another important thing to note about Sierra is that it should not be used on a season by season basis. You shouldn't look at a pitcher's Sierra for that particular season. Much like a stat like Babbitt, it's better to look at it over the course of a player's career. And in that sense, Sierra is actually one of the best predictors of a pitcher's future ERA. It's actually better at this than even XFIP. So basically what it's used for is a way to predict how how well a pitcher is going to do going forward. Kind of accumulates all of their past successes and failures and uses that to make kind of a balanced out prediction of what their future ERA might look like and does so with pretty remarkable accuracy. Now I know we've talked in the past about some statistics that are park balanced, stuff like OPS plus, WRC plus, where they bring those park factors into the equation and Sierra is park adjusted. So it is taking into account whether or not 
about that pitcher is working in a batter friendly or pitcher friendly ballpark. And that is your 101 primer on what Sierra is. And because it's more of a predictive statistic, I know it's not one you're going to use all the time, but you may see it come up and be mentioned. If you're perusing fan graphs, you might wonder what that particular statistic is all about. Like I said, there are tons of resources online if you want to learn more about it. It is a pretty complicated one, but that's Sierra at its most basic levels. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button down below. You can also hit that bell right next to the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday when a new episode goes live. I've kind of been messing around with the release times, trying to pick the best time for most views, um, so it may be helpful to know when those episodes go live if you're looking for them. Otherwise, you can also follow me on social media. I'm at 90 feet from home everywhere, everywhere social media exists. So give me a follow there. Give me your episode suggestions. Leave a comment down below. Please share these videos with your friends or on your social media feeds. It helps new people find this channel. And I'm always hoping to bring new people in and I hope that everybody enjoys these because my main goal here is to help everybody understand and enjoy baseball better. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys back next time. Thanks so much. Bye!